Okay, Hondro in Sioux City, Iowa, ding round two. Matthew here with freeprescriptionlenses.com and I'm gonna show you how I cut your prescription lenses with the Transition 7 for your own Ray-Ban 2132, size 55. That is the new Wayfair. I will be demonstrating on color 622, the black rubber, but your lenses will fit any color 55 millimeter Ray-Ban new Wayfair frame. So. I'm going to put your Italian frame into my Italian $30,000 Santanelli, the LE1000 patternless edger. Some of this is redundant, but maybe some people are seeing it for the first time. So the stylus is now tracing the left side of your frame before moving over and tracing the right here at freeprescriptionlenses.com where everyone loves a bargain and no one is disappointed with quality. You buy a genuine, authentic Ray-Ban frame and you get free, clear, single vision prescription or non-prescription fashion lenses. At least that's 99% of people. Hondro, you're the first person, I'm sorry to say, is outside the realm of free. Of course, you're buying just lenses only, so you have to pay for the lenses anyway. But I'm going to bring up the shape onto the computer. I'm going to put in your pupillary distance of 32.5 for your right eye. 32.5, hopefully you can see that. We're going to move that to 33 for the left. This is a polycarbonate lens that I'm going to cut on the soft cycle, which just for your amounts of astigmatism, because you got crazy stigs. Sorry, optical humor there. It's very scientific. I don't know what that means. Um, but it's being cut for a plastic frame. So, polycarbonate lens being cut for a plastic frame. And just like before, I'm going to take it down close to its finished size. At least get it close to it. I'm going to still go a little bit big. I can always take more off if I need to. And this is the right lens. So let's go ahead and begin. I'm going to take your right, both your lenses out of their protective sleeves. This is your right lens. I've still got the axis wheel set at 178 on my Marco 101 lensometer. I'm going to spin the power drum to four. I'm going to put your lens in and rotate it until the sphere power comes in clearly dead center there let me check your astigmatism correction a little high so I'm going to lower the lens I have a little platform here that raises and lowers I just want to get everything perfect perfect if you don't mind you know I'll take five dollars off if this doesn't need to be accurate how's that you want to save some money just kidding just kidding I would never do that okay so I'm gonna put three dots on there and I forgot to put more ink in there so my dots are really weak so I'm going to use my red pen to darken that so everyone at home can keep score, and that is the right lens. I'll put that there. I'm going to do the same thing for the left. We're at minus six and a quarter, minus two. I'm going to put the power drum at minus six and a quarter. I'm going to put your lens in and rotate it until the sphere power comes in clearly. I've identified the optical center. Lower the platform so that everything comes in perfectly. And... We are good to go. Let's put three dots on there. Let's darken those three dots. One, two, and three. And that is the left. The reason why I put those three dots in, because of your astigmatism, these have to be lined up perfectly. Your lens cannot rotate. If you had a round frame and the eye wire screw came loose and the screw started to move, you're just not going to see... I'd say as well, but you're not going to see it all at all. So I'm going to make sure that is dead center in front of your pupil. How's this for special effects? You see the words in the background? Let me see how your lenses minify. Without your glasses on, things are way too large. So when I put that on, it shrinks everything down. Now this is a block that I have to attach to your lens in order to cut it. So I'm going to put a double-sided adhesive sticker made by 3M, the same people who make post-it notes. I'm going to take one side and the black side, ooh, what a catch. You see my reflexes there? My KGB style reflexes or CIA, I'm telling on myself. The black side is the sticky side, so I'm going to put that sticker on there. Pull away the tape to make it sticky on this side. Get everything lined up. In my optical crosshairs, I have a vertical meridian and a horizontal, and I just want to make sure that is perfect. I'm going to do the same thing now for your left lens. Put that in there, get another block. Put the sticker on there, pull the tape away, and hit start. Actually, just pull the lever down, just like a slot machine. And winner! Winner, winner, chicken dinner. So let me take your right lens, put it into the chuck. Now I'll hit start. And just like you saw previously, forgive me for repeating myself, but some people may be seeing this video for the first time and not know that I just cut a 
prepare for you earlier. But these calipers are going to come down and they're going to trace the rear surface, the back surface, the concave surface, which is closest to your eyelashes. Then it's going to move over and trace the convex side of the lens, which sits away from the face. All the while measuring the thickness to know exactly where to place the bevel on the edge of your lens. The actual cutting wheel is down here on the bottom left. It's that lighter color wheel that's going to act like a heavy grit sandpaper to grind away your unbreakable lens material. This wheel in the center with that channel, that valley, that's what's going to put the bevel onto the lens so it stays inside the bevel of the frame. I will have to close the door due to the sound, but for now I just want you to see as your prescription lens touches down on the cutting wheel. Now your lenses are made out of polycarbonate. There were three different lens materials, glass, plastic, and polycarb. Now, the original lenses for this Ray-Ban frame are glass, but no one likes to wear glass anymore due to the weight. Plus, if you accidentally ever hit in the eye with anything, that glass will shatter and slice your eye wide open and will never heal. Plus, if you drop these on the ground, which sunglasses get a lot of abuse, your lenses will shatter also. Now, that leaves plastic and polycarb. Plastic is the most common and the least expensive material. I prefer to use polycarb, especially when I'm doing lenses only, because you're going to have to pop the lenses in, and I, will, I don't want the edges of plastic to ever flake. But your lenses are 40% thinner and lighter than regular plastic. They are bulletproof up to 22 caliber and have both UVA and UVB protection. As I stated before, you're, we know what the sun's harmful ultraviolet rays can do to your skin or your eyes are eight times more sensitive than your skin. So you now have permanent sunscreen for your eyes whenever you're outside. And I know you get the sun in Sioux City, Iowa, because you guys can grow some great corn. In fact, I just got to get my second batch planted in my garden this weekend. So not only are your lenses all of that, great scratch coating, one year warranty, all that stuff, but it's aspheric, meaning see how flat this lens in? A spherical lens bulges in the center. I think I've got one. Let me find one. I've got it here. Here is a spherical lens that was accidentally ordered. Hopefully you can see how this protrudes. It's a mounding. Gives you an ugly fish bowl appearance. That's why it's sitting up here and I'll never use this lens. Does it say spherical anywhere? Ah, there it is. Spherical. Spherical. Boo! Spherical. Your lenses are aspheric which means it starts off round and then flattens out. So you have a much flatter field of view. Gives you, I'm sorry, much flatter cosmetic appearance, which also gives you a wider field of view. It's a much more expensive lens, but that's what I'm gonna treat you to. Plus you have a one millimeter center thickness, which is gonna help keep your edge thickness down with your higher than average prescription. If you notice your lens is completely flat around the edges like a nickel, if I were to take it out and stand it on the counter, it would stand up on its own, but now it is actually getting the bevel put onto the lens so it stays inside the bevel of the frame. As you can see, there is water running in the background, but your unbreakable polycarb cuts dry, plastic and high index cut wet. Now towards the end of this cutting cycle, some water jets will kick in and wash away any optical debris that I'm pulling off the lens now. I love kicking that off. It's like a game. Here comes another piece. Do I get to pull it off before the water? Yes. Oh, I missed it. I missed it. Did I get it? Ah, I just didn't pull it off quick enough. So this is washing away most of your optical debris. In just a moment, I'll take it out and see if this will fit into your frame. And of course, I will demonstrate, since you're buying lenses only, I will demonstrate to you how to pop your lenses in and out. So you should never have a problem. Okay. I'm going to take your lens out of the Chuck. Or as I like to say, the Charles or Charlie. Because I don't know it well enough to call it Chuck. So, just like before, you still got rough edges left over from the cutting cycle. Some sharp edges so I want to smooth out those sharp edges I'm gonna use my hand stone which is completely flat I can put my finger on it while it's running and my finger gets warm due to the friction but it is that friction that allows me to go around and smooth out those sharp edges this white powdery substance that I'm gonna pull off your lens and then snort up my nose I'm just kidding I'm just kidding I don't even drink all I drink is water I shouldn't even joke about that stuff 
you guys don't know me. But I'm going to use my thumbnail, and I do this so much I've worn a V-shaped bevel into my thumbnail from scraping lenses all day long. But I scrape that off, and just like before, I love to do this in all my videos. I collect it all on the counter into one nice little pile, and then to dispose of it, I wipe it on the floor. And this is where I say, kids, stay in school. I went to school for years to learn how to make a mess like that. So if you want to grow up and make a mess, kids, you got to stay in school. So... To see if this fits, I'm going to tuck it in at the outside corner. I also have the side I'm working on. If you notice the frame is upright and I have the side I'm working on closest to me, I do not like to work over the frame. That seems a little bit awkward. So what I do is I have the side closest to me to work on. I tuck it in at the side closest to me as well. Then using my thumbs, I press down. And just as I thought, I need to take it down a little bit more. But with the price of these lenses, especially because these are transition, I'm going to take this down a little bit more. You can always cut more off. You can never add it back on. So I start a little bit large, and then I work my way down. So I'm going to take a tenth of a millimeter off the edge of your lens. And just like before, a millimeter is the distance between my thumbnails. I'm going to take one tenth of that distance off until your lens pops into your frame very easily. Round and round it goes. It skips the cutting wheel and goes straight to the bevel wheel. This whole process, with I'm going to show you how your lenses will darken. It takes about 20 minutes. It's now 8.48 on Friday, June 6th. 80 degrees in my hometown of Durham, North Carolina. So the water jets have kicked in to wash away that optical debris, although there isn't much since there wasn't really a lot of cutting going on this time. Okay, just a moment this will come out, I will pull it out of the chuck, dry your lens off, back to the safety bevel, back to the handstone real quick, and then back to scraping that schwarf off the edge of your lens with my occupational thumbnail. That's why I can't have pretty thumbnails. And then wipe it on the floor, you know the deal. Okay, so to see if this fits, I'm going to tuck it in at the outside corner, and this is what you're going to need to do to mount your lens. Tuck it in at the outside corner, then using your thumbs, press down. That snaps in perfectly. I'm going to begin cutting your left lens. Flip that over to left, and then hit the start button. Just like before, the calipers are going to come down and trace the concave, the rear surface, the back surface closest to your eyelashes. Then it's going to move over and trace the convex side of the lens, which sits away from your face. That will conclude your vocabulary lesson of the day. Round and round. Camera one. Camera two. Camera one. Camera two. And once this begins cutting, I'm going to go ahead and continue to work on your right lens, do a inspection to make sure it is cut correctly. They sent me the correct lens. Of course, I verified the power before I started cutting, but I just want to verify that it was cut perfectly. So this block is no longer needed. I'm going to pop it off, pull that sticker away. Draw your lens off, but keep those red dots on there. I'm going to put that red dot right in my viewfinder in the middle of my scope. Oops, it moved. Just like before, I'm getting minus four. Your right lens reads minus four, minus 350 at 178. I'm getting minus four for the sphere power. Check your astigmatism correction, also known as cylinder which is an additional 350 If someone owed you $4, then they owed you another 350 That's a combined $7.50.
I'm getting 750, seven and a half, seven and a quarter, 750, 775, eight. So we are perfect there. Take that back out and wait for your left lens to finish. Your left lens reads minus six and a quarter, minus two at 178. So if someone owed you six and a quarter, then they borrowed another two dollars, they will owe you eight and a quarter. That is what your combined powers are. And as I mentioned in the first video, where's my PD stick? Is it in my pocket? You are very nearsighted. So, without your glasses on, this is about how far you have to hold something to see it clearly. But you need 16 steps of correction for nearsightedness, so you can see far away. You need another three and a half diopters for your stigmatism correction. This number gets everything the correct size. This number takes away the fuzzy edges. So, without your glasses on, things are much larger. When you put them on, they shrink down to the correct size, and this makes everything nice and crisp. For your left eye, you need 25 steps for nearsighted correction, and then another eight steps for a total power of 33 steps. So you're on, if this were a ladder, you're on the 33rd rung. So your right eye, you know, if this were normal, I would throw your left eye in for free. But to have it match the curvature and everything else of the right eye, the average amount of astigmatism, about one, one and a quarter, 150 tops, you have 350 in your right eye. As I like to say, you have crazy stigs. You must squint a lot. So, but hey, you are your own. You are an original. We're all original. Actually, I'm not original. There's, that's the problem with living in China. If you're one in a million, there's still a thousand guys out there just like you. And actually, those numbers are growing every day. So there we are. What time is it now? 6.53. I got time to demonstrate how your lenses will darken. Okay, I'm going to take your lens out of the chuck, dry it off so it's not slippery. Back to the handstone, back to the safety bevel real quick. Back to using my occupational thumbnail to scrape away the schwarf. Oh, what a good piece that is. Look at that, look at that. I love it when they're that big. That's like when you clean out the lint trap in your dryer and it all comes out in one piece. Collect it all onto the counter. You know what's going to happen. Wipe it onto the floor. Look at that. Look at that mess. That's all from your lenses, Hondro. Hondro! Sioux City, Iowa. So for the left lens, now that I've got the right lens inserted, I'm going to flip it around. Tuck the left lens in the corner first. Push down at the nose. Snaps in perfectly. So I'm going to take this block off. Clean up my mess. Throw those in there. Pull that sticker off dry everything off put that red dot in and measure six and a quarter hopefully you can see that you have an additional two dopplers of astigmatism correction and we're ending up with a combined power of eight and a quarter 850 875 nine so we're good to go there your pupillary distance is 65.5 I'm gonna put my PD stick also short for pupillary distance stick I'm gonna put the zero next to my thumb on your right lens and when I hold it up over the left lens, we're getting 65 and a half. So that is cut perfectly too. The only thing I'm going to do differently is I'm going to write transitions on this one. I'm going to put your lenses back into the protective sleeves. And, and of course, this is actually transition seven. So let me put that on there. You have the latest generation. I do want to use my optical grade acetone to clean the red dots off of your lenses. And then I'm going to demonstrate to you how your lenses will go from clear to dark with a strong burst of ultraviolet light one more thing i do want to do is after drying these off and by the way i'm going to include one of my own premium microfiber cleaning cloths and instructions for it so it'll last forever okay i just want to make sure there are no blemishes i'm going to take your lenses that are now clear 
give them a strong burst of ultraviolet light in my little transitions box. It just has a strong UV light. Now it takes about 30 to 45 seconds for transition lenses to darken when you go outside. It takes about 45 seconds to a minute to a minute 15 when you come back inside. Now this is very important, Hondro. All transition lenses will turn dark on day one. Give them two weeks of exposure to the sun. They're going to continue to darken every day for the first two weeks till they get to their final setting. After that, they will work for years with maximum performance. The only time they will not work is if you're in the in a car with a traditional windshield, at least in a traditional car, your windshield absorbs all the sun's harmful ultraviolet rays so your upholstery doesn't rot and your dashboard doesn't crack from sitting in the sun. That's why they won't turn dark in a car. If you have a convertible or a motorcycle, yes, they will darken. Now they do, they're temperature sensitive, they get darker at 85 and below. Once it gets into the 90s, especially the upper 90s and 100, they just don't get as dark as they do when it's 85 and below. I like to remind everyone that at 100 degrees, you're miserable, they're miserable. No one wants to work really hard when it's 100 degrees outside. So that is that. That is what your lenses look like the first time they got dark. And don't worry, they're going to continue to darken. So if anyone has any questions, just email me at freeprescriptionlenses at gmail.com. Hondra, I hope you enjoyed watching me make your transition lenses. And everyone else got the chance to see how I bring that love and feeling back to glasses. Thank you.